This is the Bible in one year, day eight. Nothing is too hard for the Lord. Are you facing a seemingly impossible situation in your life? Is there an apparently irretrievable breakdown in a relationship, a serious health issue, an almost impossible challenge in your job? Is there a habit or an addiction that you're finding it hard to break? Whatever challenges you may face in the year ahead, nothing is too hard for the Lord. Abraham was a hundred years old. His wife Sarah was ninety. God promised him a son. They said, in effect, that is impossible. This is the context of the great rhetorical question, is anything too hard for the Lord? The answer is no. If Sarah could conceive, when already very old and past the age of childbearing, then nothing is too hard for the Lord. In each of the three great challenges we see in today's passages, we need to remember that nothing is too hard for the Lord. From Proverbs 1 Resist the temptations. Jesus never tells us to withdraw from the world. The challenge is to be in the world, but not of the world. You're called to resist the temptations of the world around you. The book of Proverbs gives practical advice on how to achieve that balance. Don't let others entice you into sin. If bad companions tempt you, don't go along with them. If they say, come along with us, do not give in to them. When I was practicing as a barrister, I noticed how many people were led into crime by others saying to them, Come along with us. Don't be enticed into sin by the fact that everybody else seems to be doing something, evading tax or travel fares, getting drunk or being promiscuous. Don't follow the crowd. Do not set foot on their paths. Something is not acceptable just because others are doing it. I cannot justify my actions on the basis that it's the way in which the world works. In the end, if your feet rush into sin, or you go after ill-gotten gain, it takes away your life. When you grab all you can get, that's what happens. The more you get, the less you are. The enticement of the world is very strong, yet nothing is too hard for the Lord. Lord, I pray that in the year ahead, you will give me the strength to resist all the temptations of the world and not to be enticed into sin. From the New Testament, Matthew 6 and 7 Live the Jesus lifestyle. Jesus' words are the greatest words ever spoken. They are so challenging. For example, he says, Do to others what you would have them do to you. This golden rule is beautifully simple, but seems almost impossibly hard to live out. Ask yourself what you want people to do for you, then grab the initiative and do it for them. The great challenge is putting Jesus' words into practice. His instructions are clear, but the standards seem impossibly high. Yet nothing is too hard for the Lord. First, stop worrying and start living. Jesus commands you not to worry about your life or material things. Think ahead, plan ahead, but don't worry ahead. Trust in your Heavenly Father to provide. He knows your every need. Faith is the antidote to worry. You cannot add a single hour to your life by worrying. As Corrie ten Boom put it, Worry does not empty tomorrow of sorrow, but it empties today of strength. Live in daytight compartments. Live one day at a time. Don't borrow trouble from tomorrow. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Make a decision today not to worry about tomorrow. Trust God to provide for you one day at a time. Next, sort out your priorities. Jesus tells you to change your ambitions and priorities. Seek God for who he is and not for what he can do for you. Like us, God does not want his friends only to be interested in what they can get out of him. He wants you to seek his presence, not just his presence. Take on a new set of responsibility that are both exciting and challenging. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be yours as well. Next, do not be judgmental. We're not to take pleasure in judging others, not to enjoy seeking out other people's failings or presuming their actions spring from bad motives. If we knew what people have been through, their sorrow and their suffering, we would not be so quick to judge. Jesus tells us to get our own lives sorted out first. We're to change ourselves before we try to change other people. 
rather than sowing harsh criticism and judgment, sow mercy, kindness and love. Next, persist in prayer. Don't be repetitious, but be persistent. Jesus makes wonderful promises of answered prayer. He promises good gifts as you pray. Next, choose to live a radical life. Stay on the narrow road that leads to life. On the narrow road, there's no room for pride, dishonesty, anger, hatred of enemies or unforgiveness. Humility is the order of the day. You have to give, pray, exercise self-control and seek first the kingdom of God. It's a road of purity, integrity, honesty and forgiveness. It's a road where you're required to do to others what you would have them do to you. You're to show good fruit by your character, lifestyle, teaching, actions, impact and relationships. Lord, as I face the challenge of living the Jesus lifestyle this year, thank you that nothing is impossible with you. Fill me today with your Holy Spirit and help me to live the kind of life that deep down I long to live. Old Testament from Genesis 17 and 18 Trust the Lord in difficult times. The Lord appears to Abraham and sets before him a huge challenge. I am God Almighty. Walk before me faithfully and be blameless. Then he makes a wonderful promise. I will confirm my covenant between me and you and will greatly increase your numbers. No wonder Abraham fell face down. God made a covenant with Abraham. He promised him the land of Canaan and also that many descendants and nations will come from him. This promise is highlighted by God in the name change from Abraham to Abraham, as Abraham means father of many nations. God also changes Sarai's name to Sarah, who was to be the mother of nations. The sign of the covenant was circumcision. God did not just say once to Abraham that he would have a son. He confirmed it time and again. You can expect God to speak to you about major matters in your life and confirm them many times over. Abraham's relationship with God is very intimate. God engages in conversation with Abraham. Abraham pleads with him about Ishmael. God's response is, yes, but. He says he's not only going to answer Abraham's prayer for Ishmael, he's also going to do more than Abraham could ever have asked or even imagined. The third time that God made this promise to Abraham, he sent the three visitors. As we read this through New Testament eyes, we can see an image of the Trinity here. It's clear that there are three of them, and yet it seems they speak as one. Then the Lord said, Indeed, this is famously illustrated by Andre Rublev's painting in 1410 which reflects the communion of the three angels who visited Abraham and symbolizes the tri-unity of God, one God in three persons, and the fellowship of love at the heart of God's being. God promises, I will surely return to you about this time next year, and Sarah, your wife, will have a son. Sarah laughs. She thinks, after I'm worn out and my Lord is old, Will I now have this pleasure? It's encouraging that Sarah also had the usual human weaknesses. The Lord says to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Will I really have a child now that I'm old? Sarah was afraid, so she lied and said, I did not laugh. We're all tempted sometimes to lie to get ourselves out of trouble. With the exception of Jesus, the Bible never presents the great men and women of God as faultless. The Lord's response is to repeat his promise and ask rhetorically, Is anything too hard for the Lord? Lord, help me this year to continue to trust in you. Thank you that whatever the issues I'm facing in my life, nothing is too hard for you. Pepper adds, In Matthew 6, verse 25, it says, Do not worry about your life. I have spent far too much time worrying about things in my life, family, illness, problems, work, relationships, even what to wear. I find it difficult not to worry at all. If you don't worry, it almost seems as though you don't care. There's a balance between being really concerned and burdened to pray and being worried. 
I think the answer is in trusting that God hears our prayer and will act. And hopefully he doesn't mind us coming back to the same concerns again and again.